Hey guys, welcome back. So, carrying on in this series about the Ferris F60Z zero turn, um, yeah, I've put a couple hours on it and uh, I've observed a weakness. And the weakness is that this discharge chute is like absolutely insanely large. And it gets in the way, it's tough to walk through gate, well, drive it through gates. So, I'm thinking I'm going to make a block off plate and one that I could open and close. I wouldn't say it will, but with minimal inconvenience. So Ferris does make a mulching block off plate, but I don't think that one can be open and closed. So I'm hoping to make one that can be moved or the position can be changed with relative ease without moving any bolts. So to do that, I've got a piece of steel that I'm about to show you. So here we've got a piece of eighth inch plate steel. It's about five inches tall. And I don't know, it's maybe 18 inches wide. I don't know, maybe, it'll, no, maybe, it'll, maybe about two feet. And what I did is I measured the opening from the front of the tractor to where the deck curves and I extended a little bit past the curve. So I'm going to make a cut right along this line. I'm going to do a bend right along this line. To make that cut, I'm going to use a four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. And yes, I'm going to wear hearing protection as well as eye protection. There we go. Set that aside for later. Now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to just smooth out that cut edge on the disc grinder over there. There's a lot of stuff over there right now, so I'll just do that off camera and show you the result. All right, got the edges all reasonably smooth. I'll go over it again. I wonder if I can bend this just as is. So let's stick this in the vise. A little bit above our mark. I suspect we're going to have to heat it though. Yeah, we're going to have to heat that. <laughs> Make it easier to bend, I'm just going to use an oxyacetylene torch. Might be able to get away with a map gas torch, but quite frankly, I doubt it. That's a, the vise is going to wick away a lot of the, a lot of the heat. Let's make sure we're nice and square. We're good enough. Yeah, we're close enough. We'll go a little bit above our mark because, again, like I said, the vice is going to wick away some heat and we got to account for the bending. So let's light our oxyacetylene.
the heck's going on here? There we go. Hopefully this will be hot enough. If not, we'll take it up a notch. So this torch gets to about, I think someone keep me honest here, five or 6,000 degrees. Obviously this vise that's just holding onto the metal is gonna wick away a lot of that. Maybe what we'll do is we'll take it out of the vise, heat it, and then just kind of loosely put it in the vise when we're ready to bend. You see the steel changing color. For you metallurgists out there, I believe that's the steel turning from turning to martensitic form. So we're actually hardening it by doing this. And then if we wanted to maintain that hardness, we would quench it. But we don't, so we won't. We want to soften it. Just annealing so we can bend it. There we go, starting to get red. If anybody's wondering what where I'm using these torches from, I have a little porta torch kit that I use for air conditioning work at times. Let's see if that helps. Let's put more heat out of this tip. She's going. Alright, I think I'm going to go check this on the tractor. See how it looks. Okay, the plate is cool. Here's how I'm thinking I'm going to do this. <clears throat> so I think it's going to mount about like that. It's actually a pretty nice fit for just eyeballing it. I think I'm going to build a little piece that comes up here and maybe comes up here or here, maybe an inch and a half wide and maybe two inches tall. And then I'm going to weld that right about here and right about here or here. I haven't decided yet. And I'm going to weld a 90 degree angle going back to catch that bolt hole. So I'm going to try to use that same mounting hole that the factory chute has. So um, let me cut those off camera and we'll kind of piece these together. Again, I'm going to do about an inch and a half wide and two inches tall. I think I got all the pieces cut. So the plan is, so imagine this is our blocking plate. So I'm going to weld that onto there. And then this piece is going to weld it onto the back of that. Something along those lines. So I got two of these each. Sorry about the background noise, I got my welder going. I guess I could shut that off. Let there be silence. All right, so I showed you the plate. So this is gonna mount something like that. I got these two little brackets fabricated, one for there and one for here. So now it's time to Mark those, weld them, and then we'll drill the holes. I'm waiting till the end to drill the holes only because I'm a little concerned about everything lining up properly. So, yeah, we'll do that. Sorry, guys, I realize I skipped a bazillion steps here. It's getting late, and I didn't want to let this run into the wee hours of the, the night. Um, so, all right, just to recap, so those brackets that I built, I welded onto this plate right here, here, and here, and I used that existing bolt uh, that was holding the other shoot on, and... Now it just simply rotates like that. Not too fancy, not too complicated. So next step is to clean it up, paint it, and then we'll install it. Hey guys, so it's the next morning and I could put a coat of paint, just Rust-Oleum Regal Red, nothing fancy. Probably need the coat, but this is the finished product. It actually matches the mower pretty nicely in terms of paint color. Now let's clean it up, let's install it. Again, I apologize for not filming more details of the fabrication, but it's doing too many things at once and it just became too much. 
but hopefully I gave you the major waypoints. If anybody needs measurements or any details, let me know. So now let's get the bolt. This is the same bolt that held the factory discharge chute on. I might put a couple washers in here, maybe where it contacts the mounting brackets in the deck. Let me go dig some up. All right, let's see how this is gonna work. extra washers that I got in here like so kind of sandwich them now I recognize that over time it's possible that this eighth inch plate steel will get hogged out just from vibration and whatnot so if that happens I can always buy like a little cylindrical piece or a cylindrical tube from McMaster and just weld it on there, weld it on there, make kind of, make like a little cylindrical bushing. But I'll cross that bridge if and when I come to it. I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. Something like that, guys. Hit this with fluid film. Actually, I'm gonna a little bit of blemish in the paint there. I'll do that later. This bolt is just a little bit too long. Our threaded rod is just a little bit too long to do what I wanted to do because it's thread. It's not threaded all the way through. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take off one of these nuts, put it here and here. A little old trick. That just kind of acts like a spacer. Okay. Still not really staying though. I mean, I hate to resort to the, the rope method. Maybe what I'll do is I'll look into buying that cylinder I talked about. And if I can put that as a spacer between here and here, that'll allow me to clamp down on it a little bit better. So let me, uh, let me do that offline and we'll resume when I can find something. Okay, a couple weeks has passed, and as you can see, I do have a tube in here. So what that allowed me to do, I ordered this from McMaster Car, I think it's a piece of 4130 chromoly, and what that allows me to do is to tighten down this nut or this nut to kind of clamp this piece in place. So now, if I lift it up, it stays there, I can put it in any position I want, and it holds it. So I've mowed, I don't know, maybe two or three, probably two weeks with this, total of maybe, uh, half a dozen lawns, and it work, actually works out really nicely. The only thing I don't like is grass will sometimes fly up through this gap right here between the deck and this plate. It's a very small gap. It's maybe it's probably less than an eighth of an inch, but it does come up there. Um, I put a piece of like felt, adhesive back felt in there, but as you can see, it's just getting torn up here, so that's not going to work. I'll probably take a piece of rubber or something, but anyway. Hopefully this video was helpful. You can see this was pretty easy to make. Uh, it didn't really cost that much, not anywhere near what the, uh, the commercial block off plates cost. They're, you know, three, 400 bucks. This was maybe, maybe $50 in materials. And a lot of these materials I had laying around already. So if you have a Ferris F60Z or a Snapper S50 XT with a 36 inch deck, looking for a block off plate, this thing works great. Found this video helpful. Please subscribe, stay safe, and thanks for watching everybody. Take care.